coming up on today's edition of Wildcat Weekly. Music Man, Teacher Appreciation, and Men's Volleyball. All this and much more coming up next. Hi, and welcome to this week's edition of Wildcat Weekly. I'm Leah Keating. The Wells Fargo Wagon, 76 trombones, and lots of trouble. Lauren takes a look into this year's production of The Music Man. Niqua's theater and music departments have been working on this year's musical production, The Music Man. The Music Man is a story that takes place in the summer of 1912 in a small Midwestern town called River City, Iowa. It's a tale of a man named Harold Hill, who is a traveling salesman who claims that he can sell and make money from musical instruments. The irony is he does not know one note from another, nor does he know how to play an instrument. Lots of time and hard work have gone into this production. We've been working since the end of January, and at this point we're having seven, eight hour rehearsals for, the month, for this past month, and we're just putting in so much effort into this show but it's all worth it once it comes to opening night this Thursday. What makes The Music Man unique this year compared to previous year's productions is the fact that we have an exceedingly large cast size. We also have partnered with some of the uh, local elementary schools in our district and we have two elementary students in our show to play the roles of Winthrop and Amaryllis. As well, there will be a surprise at the end of the production that involves a different group of students and I cannot reveal the surprise at this time. It's a really fun show. If you saw Jekyll and Hyde or Carousel in the past two years, it's completely different. It has a totally different vibe. It's, it's a very fun, it's funny. There's a lot of just crazy songs, dances, characters. It's just a lot of fun to see and be a part of. It's a ton of fun. There's singing, acting, dancing, a lot of work that goes into it, but it is a very fun show that like everyone should go see. So go see the show tonight at 7 or tomorrow at 7. For Wildcat Weekly, I'm Lauren Bilgrey. Spring is here. The sun is shining and the flowers are blooming. And so are the tulips that were planted by your fellow Wildcats at the beginning of the year. Sydney and Mac dig into this story. This year, the Star Eaters decided to try something new. They started the Red Tulip Project to help the student body make healthy choices. The Red Tulip Bowl project was for Star Raiders. Um, Star Raiders is a club that advocates for being alcohol and drug free while you're in high school. And um, we only meet like twice a month. And at the end of the year, we go on a raid at all the elementary schools and we talk to the kids about making healthy life choices. The Red Tulip project really came about uh, through the social workers and especially Sarah Hinkle, a, she's a social worker here in the junior house. Uh, she came to me, she heard about uh, Mattia Valley doing a red tulip project last year. Um, and she thought that it might be something that the Star Raiders group that I help organize, um, that that might be something that they would want to do during Red Ribbon Week. Back in October of 2012, the Star Raiders sold red tulip bulbs to the student body. When you bought a red paper tulip bulb in the beginning of the year, you wrote your name on it and it was just making a promise to yourself that you would be alcohol and drug free for the rest of the year. Now that the actual red tulip bulbs are blooming outside the Gold Campus and the main campus, it's a reminder of your promise that you made to yourself. And basically, they, symbolically, what they were doing was buying one tulip bulb. And then the horticulture classes planted the tulip bulbs out in two areas right uh, by the auditorium entrance. And the hope was that this spring that all those bulbs would bloom as a reminder of the, the drug-free pledge that uh, students made. My hope is that by the time the musical comes around um, that there will be a red, car a red carpet of uh, tulip bulbs uh, greeting all the patrons going to the musical. So look out for the red tulips to remind yourself of the promise you made at the beginning of this year. For Wildcat Weekly, I'm Cindy Fran, along with Mackenzie Kiley. With the varsity team on the road to state and the JV team playing for a great cause, Patrick and Aaron set up the story on Nequa Valley Men's Volleyball. The Nequa Men's Volleyball team has jumped out to an excellent start this year, and they feel confident about their ability to perform for the rest of the season. We've been doing pretty well this year. We're 14-3. Uh, 
Uh, we've, you know, a couple, couple losses that have been heartbreaking, but um, we've built from it. Um, I think our chemistry um, as a team is, um, is very good. This is our year to shine, and I think we're really taking full advantage of it. Among many different reasons, the Wildcats' team chemistry has allowed them to play well on the court. We've all been friends um, all four years of high school. Uh, we were all basically on the same freshman A team, and you know we've played club together for four years. We've really built our friendships and our um, chemistry on the court. And I feel like last year we were really looking forward to it. You know we built up the season a lot. Uh, we've had a great start to the season. Um, you know, coming into the season we had a lot of unknowns. We weren't sure what to expect because uh, we graduated our whole starting lineup with seniors. So you know we knew individually the talent was there. So it's just a matter of how the guys were going to play as a team. So I think we've been surprising a lot of people. I think a lot of teams weren't really expecting us to, to be this successful, but we knew what we had as individual players, but it's a matter of putting those pieces together and the guys have really gelled well together. Although unranked at the beginning of the season, now ranked number eighth in state, the Wildcats have caught the attention of many other top ranked teams. One of the challenges once you, you know, once teams start to notice that you're, you're one of the, you know, team to consider um, is that, you know, obviously then they're gonna elevate their game. And so, you know, you have to make sure you can't go out there and take anybody for granted. You have to treat every match as if it's going to be your last match. You know, then, you know, teams might not have been expecting us to have the success that we've had so far this year. So, obviously, that's a challenge that we have to deal with. Remember to come support your Nico Valley Men's Wildcats volleyball players at their home match on May 14th in the main gym at 530 against Bartlett. And for Wildcat Weekly, I'm Aaron Louth. And now over to the JV team on a special event supporting a fellow volleyball player and former Nequa student. In October of 2010, Nequa lost one of their loved ones, Kyle Zulek. He was a part of the boys JV volleyball team when he passed away later that year. Kyle was a player who always put forth the best effort in practice. Uh, just embodies positive attitude and hard work. I mean, he might not have gotten a lot of playing time, but he was always out there playing hard and when he did get on the court, you know, he, he put it all on the floor and never, never really gave up. In honor of Kyle, the team dedicates a tournament to him and help put on a pancake breakfast for the public. In the morning breakfast we have pancakes and uh, all the guys kind of meet in the, in the cafeteria beforehand and celebrate what he meant to volleyball and you know, what this sport means to all of us. I'm looking forward to playing the tournament at our home, home court. Uh, We've done well in this tournament in the past and I hope we can bring home another championship. Oh, it means a lot to represent Kyle at this tournament. Um, even though I may have never knew, known him, I know he was a great person and I, we just want to live on his legacy through this tournament. So we hope to see you at the breakfast on May 4th and to support the JV volleyball team. For Wildcat Weekly, I'm Patrick Gonzera. Tuesday, May 7th is National Teacher Day. This is a day celebrating the men and women who dedicate their time to helping others. Christine sits down with students who have been greatly impacted by your incredible Nequa Valley staff. I want to thank Mr. Brower for being such an inspiring person and helping me to be a better person. Mr. Rossi for being that teacher that makes me want to come to class because he's just a really funny guy and uh, he makes learning fun. Mrs. Debezik for being an amazing English teacher and entertaining us all with her amazing childhood stories. Mr. G, uh, also known as Mr. Gelsomino, he's been a really good mentor for me over the last three years in media classes and uh, he's really given me the steps I need to pursue my career in the media field next year. Mr. Ricca because he's the best teacher ever. Mr. Smith for not only probably being my most favorite teacher at Nico Valley but also being the most influential teacher as well. Mr. Monis and Mr. Aquila for helping me with athletic training all the time and teaching me everything they know. Mr. Desmond for making sophomore English a lot of fun and for writing me a nice letter of recommendation. Mrs. Thormeyer because she puts in a ton of effort to try to connect with her students and she just makes the overall school day so much more enjoyable. Miss Jacobus for being awesome and she always helps me with like scholarships and letters of rec. Mr. Fredeski, he's a great math teacher but he also has many other talents. If it were up to me, I'd put you on the Olympic track team for sure. Dr. McBride for his inspiration on his leadership and how he shows so much compassion for his students. And to all the faculty and staff, thank you. And for Wildcat Weekly, I'm Christine Boudreaux. Thank you for watching this week's edition of Wildcat Weekly. Have a fantastic weekend.